All right, let's do this, son, bitch. And a three, and a two, and a one. It's August 4th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast of Venture and Length, episode number 519. And uh, I'm not playing Merge Dragons while we're watching this show we're doing the show i'm not doing that at all oh. mm-hmm. uh, anyways it's that time of the month it used to be the end of the month but instead it's now the beginning of the month of the following month it is time for this Oh, it's the same old, same old. <laughs> Mother nagging me about getting measurements uh, for my suit, which is fair. Uh, and me uh, lacking sleep because my sleep schedule is wonky. Uh, I'm playing games, but watching TV and impulse buying anime DVD or Blu-rays because they're not streaming anywhere. You know, that's that's pretty much it. Mm. Hey, um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Go mm-hmm. get your suit measurements. Oh, mm, well, you're not my mom. I know I'm not your mom. <laughs> Think of it this apparently, way. Apparently, CK gets you to do it. <laughs> Think of it this way: you get to go and have a man like stick his hands up in between your thighs. Well, yeah, but it's probably Maybe. not going to be that cute. You never know. Oh, oh, oh. You're like, oh, honey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've had, so one of my, when I got my suit um, for my brother's wedding, um, the alt, I believe the um, guy who did my measurements was a very, he was a smaller gentleman, but he was very much handsome as fuck. Like this, yeah. To be fair. My sister doesn't even isn't really clear about like the coloring. That's okay. Like like colors. I'm thinking what I want to do is I'll I'll do standard suit jacket, standard pants, uh, maybe go the uh, rec- request the overalls route, or not overalls up 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 suspenders route. Um. Instead of the belt, although I have a boss ass fashion belt from from uh, Core Essentials, I've talked about them before, and uh, and then like a nice lavender shirt and a dark purple tie. I'm thinking I kind of want to go with like a purple bow tie. Mm. Go for it. I'm just, but go I'm get just, it done. I mean, you, you don't really know the options until you go get you it done. You also have to realize I work overnights currently. <laughs> I'm not um, aware. Which means so, in the morning you would have time while the store is open to go in. Well, if the store is open. <laughs> I get okay. off work at 7. Usually what uh, try to go to bed at 11 so I can wake up at 7. Uh, so that I can have a little bit of uh, busy time before I head into work. So, and then there's the weekends and the weekends, quote unquote, because, you know, I, today's Friday for me, um, uh, it gets weird. So it's, it's a whole bunch of, uh, clusterfuck. I have to either stay up late, quote unquote, or mm-hmm. something. So it's, it's or come get difficult. up earlier. I mean, it's kind of the catch 22. You kind of yeah. have the. 
either one or the other. But I know that's the thing. That's done. the problem. And yes, I know so, I'm playing. And you have days off in the middle of the week when the business is open. I also have to DM us a Dungeons and Dragons game, which is more fun. <laughs> so. Hashtag first world problems. I'm sure your sister will understand when you show up in just boxer shorts and a ratty t-shirt. Well, I'm sure <laughs> get it done. Bad, but yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I just <laughs> been procrastinating, and sometimes forgetting. I'm just like relaxing, getting de-stressing from work. Although tech stress is uh, work is stressful, not because of the type of work I'm doing, but because of the people. Uh, and that's what I technically was trying to get with, get away from when I went overnights. Ah, uh, unfortunately, it didn't work that way. Like when you come in, and your airings aren't even assigned yet, so it's like I have no idea what I'm supposed to be watching tonight. So, it was all reliable before. Anyways, same old, same old. It's pretty much it, Damon. Um, sorry. Anyway, um, speaking of work and issues like that, I am I am busy at work. Um, we are dealing with um transitioning into new job while finishing stuff for the old job. So that is kind of becoming this um overlap um right now. Um, it's been interesting. We had a meet and greet with the um the team, this um, away team, essentially the third party administrator team um, yesterday or not yesterday, um, early in the month of July and went pretty well. Um, it was nice to kind of air out some things that are still we're still having problems with. Um, the good thing is um, our our manager, so me and my manager's manager, is still kind of staying on and is definitely really helping with like making sure things are kind of running a little bit more smoothly. And since this was her, for lack of a better term, baby, like this was her team and this was her thing when she started, um, not when she started, but when um, when it started, um, having her experience and advice has been very helpful. Hmm. Um, so yay for that. Um, um, basically, during the month of July as well, um, I was also dealing with rehearsals for um, additional rehearsals for a special event that the chorus was doing. Um, the chorus was asked to participate in an event called Look Around. It was the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra's 125th anniversary kind of kickoff celebration, blah, blah, blah. They brought in this apparently very talented um composer to compose these songs and um what's the number like 600 artists musicians etc were par- being a part of this along with like the cso and everything else so um that happened yesterday actually um uh, but rehearsing for it was grueling because it was um wednesdays and sundays essentially um and then this past week i've rehearsed um Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Thursday and Friday were actually downtown outside where the event was taking place. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and God, it was hot because <laughs> one of the things they asked us to do, every group was assigned a um, statement color. Um, ours was supposed to be indigo blue. Color? Yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> what? I think it was a mate, a way to make like your group your group as opposed to like so that everyone else blends in with the crowd um ours was supposed to be indigo but um i don't know about you but i ain't gotten that indigo so we ended up going with like navy blues and um Mm -hmm. you also had a neutral color um i guess was the kind of meant to like balance out everything and ours was gray so for most of the for the most part, everyone wore um, like dark blue jeans, our navy shirts, and um, gray our gray pants, our gray shirts. It was very interesting. Um, and there were other colors. There were reds and blues and turquoises, and um, I think there was uh, the one of the bands was orange was their color. 
So yeah, it's you know, it was a lot of fun. I really did enjoy um, the crowd because it got busy. I wasn't expecting it to be as big a deal as it was. So yay for exposure for the men's chorus. Yay for like getting out there and probably putting ourselves in front of people who have never heard us before. So the um, board chorus board member hat <laughs> is very happy and proud. Mm-hmm. The uh, <laughs> The chorus member, singing member, was very tired, very exhausted because it was. You had to keep on time because everything kind of happened in a, you know, was supposed to happen in a timely fashion. Everything was timed to a point, like specific points in time. Um, and that was a little crazy. We had, um, from one of our last stops to the next stop, we had three minutes. And the past couple of days when there was no crowd kind of going along, it was very easy to get like to there. Mm-hmm. But once you add the crowd, whoo, it 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 was crazy. I think we had one minute and half the chorus wasn't there. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh yeah. dear. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> that was kind of crazy. Um, and then we were supposed to which anyway they we came we 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 started at uh one of the parks downtown and then we had like a three four block track to get to washington park um, which is the big park downtown um but at one point down the street um they block it off and then the idea being that after a certain moment happens the um the barrier, the bridge is broken and everyone can go across, go basically go into the park. Um, bottleneck doesn't begin to describe it. Mm. <laughs> and we had, again, like maybe three or four minutes to get from there, which was like halfway to the park, maybe a couple of blocks from the park to. Um, so you're saying the hole is very tight. Yes, it was very tight. Um, it was very difficult to get anything in or out. And it was just so full of, like, things. So Most people say just say, you know, more loop. but I don't think that would have worked in this situation. I mean, of course, it happened raining. So that means there was some lubrication there was already in play? I mean, I, would, I mean, people I mean, sweat it. rain is just like Ow. spit. <laughs> anyway. it, was a, it was it was very rough ordeal yeah it was very it was a very difficult time but it was a good time so hashtag yay. way too many innuendos <laughs> just saying mm-hmm. well that's me gary um the ride continues uh i'm trying to think if there was really anything outstanding per se in the month of July uh, went to the convention took dad it was a different experience it was um, challenging Mm -hmm. Uh, he's you know been I don't know if I've actually said this or not uh, dad has Parkinson's and so he's Mm -hmm. been um, progressing with it and I've noticed over the past like month that his, uh, I think his cognitive abilities are declining. Mm. Um, mm. And I'm not, I don't know for certain, but I have a feeling like this, this month and next month will be um, having some assessments and things done and try to figure some stuff out what's going to mm-hmm. be going on. So, cause I've noticed like he's not really like keeping track of time, taking his medications correctly. So, mm-hmm. um, and I've been wanting to like have people come and help and stuff like that. So, so that's on the the personal side of things. Uh, let's see. At the end of the month, my car died. Oh, so, oh yeah. well, that's fun. Yeah. So it's currently in the shop. Um, so that's going to be a big expensive bill that I didn't know was coming, which is very uh-huh. unfortunate. Uh, so I have a a loaner from the dealership right now, which. It's kind of comical because when you have an older car, because she's turning nine this coming weekend, um, and then you get a new car, 
like it's a rental which I had for two days or a different new car which I have now for a loaner. I'm like, look at all these damn bells and whistles. <laughs> <laughs> and like they were like, oh, well, the loaners are a base level of a brand new car. Base level, bitch. Base level has a touch screen built into the dash. <laughs> that like if I connect USB to my phone, Apple CarPlay loads and then it like kind of looks like a mini version of some of my apps on my phone that are allowed to interact and shit. And like I'm like, this is base level? <laughs> I'm like, obviously technology has advanced in almost a decade in vehicles and I'm just like really out of touch with it. I wish I could afford to get a new car. <laughs> That yeah. mm. Well, that's just it. Like, I really can't afford to, you know, take mm -hmm. out our payment. So I'm like, oh, well, by the time I get around to buying another new car, you know, it'll, I'll, <laughs> there'll be some things to look forward to, like backup yes. cameras, like apparently being <laughs> in every vehicle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just things of that nature. So, yeah, there's the car thing. And um, work has been very interesting. Uh, started the new project at the top of last month. Uh, the first week was pretty rough because we didn't feel like we knew what the hell we were doing. <laughs> That's always a pleasant uh, experience. And then we get towards the end of the month and now starting next week, although I know we're in August, uh, we're going to start learning another state and how they do their things. Okay. I I'm not really an expert pain. on the first one yet. Cool beans. Yeah. I so Get it going. Um, get it. Yeah, and there's something else, but I'll uh, I'll hold on that because it's just too premature. Um, yeah, so eh, work's been interesting. I mean, I'm finding my groove. I'm also not comfortable about finding my groove because mm -hmm. I really need to make more money. So I'm like needing to balance between like the work and the life stuff, and like trying to see if I can find something new. Uh, so I kind of keep watching job postings for uh, some stuff, and we'll see. But I don't know. We're mm -hmm. we're kind of plodding along with uh, with some stuff, and I've got friends who are going through some some shit right now. So it's trying to balance like my stuff and being available for other people and all that kind of thing. And I don't know if I'm gonna have much of an opportunity to get away and travel like I want to because. Um, I'm thinking more and more about how I need to keep tabs on dad. And so that's going to be a factor uh -huh. if I can go anywhere and do anything, see people, that kind of stuff. And, yeah. and then there's, of course, the run. Uh, <laughs> we're, that's a biggie. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's months. It's months and months and months and months and months away. Um, in fact, it's uh, like nine months away. So it's, you know not the end of the world, but I was kind of hoping we'd be doing some things specifically right now. Cause I want to, you know, keep people from being in this anxious, anticipating mode. Apparently some folks are, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they would nice. like to know when can we register? Um, so I wanted to, you know, have some announcement stuff lined up soon to, to put out there and, and get going. And I realized, like, I had a really great conversation yesterday with um, someone who's local that has been to the event. Um, it is kind of a good sounding board and was explaining about, like, maybe where some anxiety and, like, stuff is coming from, like, from anonymous attendees. Let's put it that way. And I get it. When you change up the model of how things get done, people get a little uncomfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. In the past, for many years, most recent past, we would immediately launch registration and all that kind of stuff as soon as the run was ending. Or it hadn't even ended. It was Sunday morning, practically. Uh -huh. And we stopped that and we took a break this year. <laughs> so everybody's like, like, what's going on? Like, da da da. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> David looking at his imaginary watch. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So, and a really good point was made was mm -hmm. they don't, there are people who really don't want to miss out, but they also need to plan their lives. So, like, we had announced dates. So, some people are like kind of aware of that. You know, and if you go to the website, it lists the dates. So, you can at least put that on a calendar, but then, you know, some people want to be 
understandably, they want to be part of the first group to be able to book. That was another thing that we changed. We didn't do the early uh, stuff. Like we uh-huh. used to kind of for a number of years, although it's been a little while, we used to allow like the most recent attendees to be the first ones to book for the following year. Uh-huh. But that kind of became an issue because then people were like, you know, it's not quite favoritism, but it limits new people. Mm. You know, and so now we're doing more kind of like open uh, stuff. So, yeah, it'll be it shall be interesting. But um, I'm really excited about the potential of some things that we're going to do this coming year. But I can't really talk about that. Um, <laughs> I also need to get, you know, everybody back on page. Like we need to kind of start getting some stuff done. Um, you know, we need to I, get our shit together. Well, I mean, it's just like, well, this is an example that I gave. Like, I would like to, when a registration actually starts to kind of have some semblance of the schedule, even if it isn't got any real specifics in it yet. You know, things like that. Um, So, and I'm thinking more about, like, if people want to go and they have not been before, they'd probably like to have an idea as to what goes on. (laughs) Instead of just, like, looking at pictures of past events and being like, oh there's some people that look like they're having fun. I guess I'll go. Cause that's not really how people Water are. park from this time to this time. Uh, right. And then maybe just generic, like, like in hotel events, maybe as a section. And that goes for a long time. Well, to be honest, the, the, the run for the most part for quite a few years has had a pretty basic schedule. Um, and it works relatively well. Uh, so there's not too much. I think that we want to move away from that. It's, you know, it's more like I want to put in some new, some new stuff this year. So Mm -hmm. whether we go outside of the run and pay that cost or we try to internalize it and take it on ourselves, I don't know yet. That remains to be seen. So we shall see. Yeah. 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 So anyways, that's it. Kind of it for me. Nice. Uh, so that just means, uh, maybe I should just keep this up. Anyways, it is time for this. <laughs> Gary, what's been going on in the, over in the Facebook ish lands? Um, we got a new like on Facebook. Ooh. Yay. We would like to thank Chris Evans bear. For liking our uh, Facebook page. So thank you very much. Thank you very and much. It's the what's best that? thing anyone's ever done for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, does that really take me back? Wow. I sang and dance performed that number in high school on the local uh, community theater stage. Anyways, it was part of a Christmas spectacular show. Anyways, we ripped off the Radio City Music Hall production. Spectacular, <laughs> spectacular. Anyways, um, adjacent to Facebook, Instagram, we got two new followers. Oh, hey, I'm Matt and one Lewin40. So thank you for following us on Insta. Ah. Uh, we also got a comment on Instagram regarding COL 516. Let's talk about sex. What porn taught us part one? Haunt Cub commented. I wonder what a daddy cub could contribute with some like cool shade and big grin emoticons. Hmm. Not what exactly sure cub? the contents of that. <laughs> <laughs> like contribute to the conversation. Porn. Right, or... right. Like, like, was it in I'm regards fine. to a specific thing during the episode that we talked about? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm fine with the daddy cub. <laughs> uh, you know, you're fine with the daddy cub. I think we all be fine with the daddy cub. Oh, well, hey. We're daddy doggos. And... Yeah. I mean, if and... daddy's somewhere in the title. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hi, daddy. All right, Daddy Twink, be- maybe not, but, uh, you know, to each their own. And then maybe he is hot. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, where were we? Damon, what's uh, up with YouTube? 
Um, so we have a new subscriber on YouTube. Yay! Um, and I believe this is Lavelle Trahan. Um, I actually met this individual in person. I, I uh, think I have as well. Yeah, I was quite surprised to see the subscription. So, hey, girl, how you? Hey. Um. <laughs> hey. Nice. Welcome, welcome. And we also got um, two comments on COL. 516, let's talk about sex. What porn taught us, part one. <laughs> um, Escape Pod 42 said, I know it's not your guys' fault, but a lot of us aren't getting notifications and stuff. Uh, make sure you ding the bell. Uh, otherwise, it should be giving out the notifications. Uh, make sure that when we go live, the notification got on. I got it. So I know it went out. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I don't know what's going on there. Well, so just so that people are aware, there's two things that are happening. Like there's the live show and then the video of this actually that ends up posting days later. Mm -hmm. So like either you catch us live or it's the, the later stuff. So, yeah. And I but, think if you so you would only get the notification that the show is posted if you've got the bell dinged. Right. So, so like. Like if you subscribe, then after that, I think you have to decide if you want to get email notification. Um, and then with the bell, like that basically is kind of letting you know, like live video posted. Yeah. So in both cases where they catch us live on Sunday or later in the week when the video posts, uh, then yeah. Yeah. It should be going out. Yeah. I don't know how exactly is going on there. Just double check those. Make sure you got notifications on, on whatever app. You have, or I don't, I don't know how the emails go out, but. And if that's not working, then uh, you could. Um, Jeff, can they get, can they subscribe on our blog site to like an RSS feed to be notified when new stuff posts? I don't know. You know what? I did that. get a notification. I forgot how I did that. Because uh, hmm. that might be another option. I don't know. Hmm. All right. With that, and then the next comment, uh, we have a comment from Al Teron Robinson, and he says, "What bugs me about porn was the what what bugs me about porn was the lack of diversity in bear porn. Even now, it's still very little diversity. Girl, same. <laughs> so, remember earlier in the show when I said I'm going to talk about something later? Uh oh. In the feedback. So, right, like even I was talking about like stocky dudes. Um, I don't think Brandon doesn't have as much diversity because he because he isn't trying. I think it's one it's very challenging to put on that type of like work or that business, right? To get people to agree to be filmed and you know be a model and all that. But then on top of it, I don't know that there's that many people who are willing in terms of the diversity. And I wonder if it's like a weird, like chasing tail situation. Like, I don't see myself in film. Therefore, I don't think I can be in film. Therefore, I don't pursue being in film. Like, I'm not saying yeah. that's the only reason. I'm just saying it would make sense to me if, like, you don't see yourself represented. Why would you think you could do it? Yeah. It I don't could know. be a double, it's, it could be essentially to not kind of, I don't want to dwell on it too long, but it could always be a. Um, like you said, it could be that situation where because I don't see myself, therefore I don't want to join it. It could also be that um, oftentimes they don't, people don't get asked or offered. Mm -hmm. So it's also that part of it too. So yeah, and those and, and, and those people of various uh, various uh, coloring and persuasions, it never hurts to ask if you want to be in one of the videos. Uh, you know, def definitely hit them up. Because yeah, I'm I sure mean, they'd be be totally willing to to have you. I don't think I don't think it is a part that there's probably part of it is lack of specifically targeting for those type of actors. They're more of looking for people who just want to mm -hmm. versus uh, versus. Uh, um, like actually going and inviting. I mean, it maybe that is something that that some of the the site should 
should do is solicit. Like if they go onto Xtube or Pornhub or something, find an amateur person who's putting up a lot of content and they're like, Hey, would you like to be in one of our videos? Are you able to make it to this event or whatever to, to to make arrangements? And it just may not, it it may not be as easy as you may think. And it's just the people who they can make those arrangements with just well, end up being <laughs> I don't know no I mean you bring up a good point though about like being at events and stuff like that's there, there's like a, a a time opportunity factor for business so well, yes a lot of uh, bear community based adult media has been done at events because mm-hmm. you can travel to it you can get a group of people together you know who are going to be doing this thing and you have like a venue quote unquote aka hotel room <laughs> so, you know, as opposed to trying to rent a house or go mm-hmm. someplace and not get, you know, arrested because you're doing lewd acts in public or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could. And that's the thing. Like, I think I think Brandon's based out of Vegas or mm-hmm. somewhere in that vicinity, maybe Reno, New Mexico, Arizona, somewhere along those lines. That general area. Yeah. Right. And so. Like he may be willing to have you know more individuals and put more product out there, but if people got to travel, that's a cost. And mm-hmm. where is that cost coming from? Is it going to be out of pocket? You know, how does that work? You know, there's just a lot of things. Um, so I think that's part of the reason that it's you know a challenge to to make those kind of things. I guess that's probably more why I'm I'm perfectly fine with the amateur stuff that we were talking about in pre-show because that's mostly made in people's homes. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. as I keep watching one young cub couple, they have a thing for doing shit in public. So there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to always be a it's it's not. A, I think it's not a thing for us. We could ever really say, you know, because we're not in the industry. So and I, I would definitely uh, say whatever you do, don't necessarily blame the, the porn companies for it. Uh, because I don't think it's necessarily lack of. I mean, there's probably a lack of like wanting to getting putting in the effort because we don't know how much effort it would take to try to and then right. at some point might sometimes be considered as pandering i mean i know there's a lot of like bear films videos which which have people of color um so i know it's they're oh i'm pretty sure I, I mean, I don't take my absolute word for it, but I'm pretty sure that the porn companies aren't trying to not put these type of pe- people in. It's just, you know, right. making the connections and making the arrangements, which is, which might be the difficulties. And as porn isn't necessarily a huge money making business. No, it's not not necessarily, especially when you're being more community based. Mm-hmm. All that said, should there be more? Absolutely. And yeah. so I applaud the effort when it's made, you know, people put stuff together and able to do it. I mean, um, most of my chubby Asian porn ends up being something that I find somebody got from a video that's being sold in Japan. Hmm. Or China or something like that, you know? Well, and actually, you just brought up a good point, Jeff. There may be content out there we're just not aware of because we're not in those areas. Mm-hmm. Like, there could be, as an example, there could be a lot of um, Turkish bath, you know, kind of stuff content wise that we just don't know about, you know, that may be very popular in, in another region of the world. You know, I don't know. Yeah. We, we live in our country of a bubble. So that's. Not exactly the best thing. Maybe we just need to go searching for imports and pay that extra cost. Wow! <laughs> it's it's like a like those rare uh, uh, sing, CD singles that, that that are out there. Like the Japan Japanese single for Vow had certain songs on it, but the American single for Vow only had Vow on it. So right. in order for me to get subhuman and the original version of number one crush, I had to pay $60 for an import. Similar thing. I'm making analogies here. Work with me. Anybody, anybody who's outside of the U S let us know. 
if you see like more diversity in in your adult media. Yeah, I don't think curious. it's lack of trying necessarily. Right. No. Yeah. Maybe that's another show. Maybe maybe that's a topic. Maybe we need to see if we can get a pornographer to come on and a pornographer. Okay. And, and discuss the business of porn to to get kind of a behind the scenes sort of thing. <laughs> Brandon, if you're listening. Speaking of <laughs> of a behind the scenes thing, Jav, I think we got a phone call. Oh yes, we we got a uh, you know that whole like, like massage table conversation. Well, mm-hmm. there is a particular person who does massages that has an answer. Hey guys, this is Q. I am calling be, uh, in reference to your last podcast, the fantasies episode, and specifically with. Gary asking about massage tables and the weight, or at least the, like, what is the weight limit of a typical professional massage table? So, 400 pounds is typically the least amount of weight that a professional massage table can hold. The table that I have has a working weight of 650 pounds. And I'm actually, in about a month or so, going to purchase a table that has a working weight of 1,500 pounds. Uh, because I do a lot of work on the table where I'm actually on top of my client myself. So I weigh 250. You know, they weigh 300. That's 550 pounds. And if I'm doing a lot of work on the table, I need to make sure that it's not going to squeak or <laughs> do any of those you know, making those weird or break or any of those things. So 1,500 pounds <laughs> uh, is probably the maximum amount I've heard of a table having, a professional portable table. But, yeah, so there you go. There's your information. Thanks, guys. Love the podcast. And to be fair, uh, Q, when he does massages at Bear Events, he's doing a professional massage, not ne- not one with a happy ending. Mm-hmm. Happy ending at another time, maybe. Just not during the massage <laughs> session. You got to talk to Q about whether or not you get any happiness out of him. Um, huh? Besides huh? a massage. I'm just going to put it that way. But, but that's true of every massage therapist. So, uh, he, thanks, he's Q. He's very I'm ethical about his, about his business. Yeah. So thanks for all the info. We basically learned 400 pounds is the least. And apparently 1,500 pounds is the maximum. And he's about to get one. Uh so to help explain, because I think some people were kind of like, what? When Q said, I'm actually on top of my client. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me. Like, make sure Again, we not explain. happy ending sort of on top of <laughs> it, It's more of actually like leverage sort of thing. Well, right. Like, I mean, you know, right. that's the whole thing is they're utilizing gravity as physical like force Mm -hmm. and so if you're using the human body on top of another human body you get that much more um you know work and depth especially for deep tissue and things like that Uh, i don't know for certain but q might be walking on people or you know kneeling and and things of that nature Mm -hmm. i'm not quite sure so I'm very intrigued. We, we are not have have we are not point. massage therapists, so we don't know the specific details. But he's usually above. We should say maybe would probably yeah. be a better way. His clients yeah. when he's doing that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so. We also had some Twitter followers. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see if I can pronounce. Uh, I think uh, two of these I might have trouble with. Uh, we have Nigel Farmer eleven. CD Zinsha G, uh, Bear Mix, uh, David Wilburn, Jeep Cub 67, Sam Keenan, and Beto Can Hotto. Hmm? B2 Can Hotto? I don't know. Something like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, the, the thing about Twitter names is, 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 unless they have like underscores or something else to split the words, you can't really figure out the split in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. B two can hoto. I don't know. Yeah. Like that. yeah. So, Gary, tell us about our July. 
Uh, well, we had four shows in the month of July. We started off with the What's Going On Recapping June, which was Pride Month. Uh, and then we brought uh, back Mr. Uh, Daddy Hadrian for Let's Talk About Sex, What Porn Taught Us Part 1. Yes, there will be a part two. It is scheduled. Stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned. Uh, then we did 517, which is part of the new What Is series, What Is Self Hate. Uh, and then we completely flipped the script. Last week we talked about favorite fantasies. <laughs> Fantasy. What we really want. We told yeah. you what we want, what we really, really want. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I told you what I want, what I really, really want. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, speaking of which. Uh, it's August. So, yeah, yes. the end of August is going to be fun. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we do have to do that, don't we? I mean, technically we don't have to, but it's become <laughs> tradition. Uh, if, if some of you have just joining us uh, 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 between last August and this August, don't know. Uh, my birthday is at the end of the month. And we celebrate it by getting drunk on a Skype call. And we stream it to you. And there's a lot of doorbells ringing. <laughs> uh, I'm just putting it that way. So, yeah, there you have it. So, something to look forward to tease. Um, oh, one thing we didn't uh, uh, talk about in our feedback, which is now in this section. I don't know why it's in a separate section. Gary? Do you want to talk about this? Oh, yeah. So um, we got a reply email to our Trans Bear listener show. Yay! So here we go. Um, thanks for the episode. So I've been busy lately and just got to the episode this morning. I had uh, Who did we get this from? Uh, you didn't mention that. It's from the listener who was originally the trans in it before. Listener. Correct. You didn't mention that. <laughs> oh. Sorry. It's because it's on the screen and I'm reading it and I completely forgot to verbalize. So I mean, it's right at the top. <laughs> no, I know. Anyway. But... <clears throat> Anyways, moving on. So this is the email that we got in reply to the show we did, which is Transparent Listener, <clears throat> which is Prompt. the person that prompted the whole thing. Let's put it that way. Um, thanks for the episode. So I've been busy lately and just got to the episode this morning. I hadn't even realized you posted a whole episode reply or I would have carved out the time to listen to it already. It's okay. You got a life. Yeah. It's going to be all right. Uh, first this off, I would podcast. say sorry. It's, pre it's recorded, so you can go back to it anytime. That's true. Um, they continue and said, first off, I would say sorry. I knew when I sent it, one of the episodes I was referencing was quite old. And you may have grown an opinion so it was recorded. But since I was taking time to send the email, I wanted to hit on all my thoughts just in case. Um, I've attached a good picture of someone who has received bottom surgery. It's not me. I have all of my original parts. I haven't had surgery. If you're wanting other pictures for reference, I honestly recommend watching porn with trans guys. And then in parentheses, they wrote, they're, though often if they've had bottom surgery, it's kind of like playing Where's Waldo since it can be difficult to really tell. And parentheses. Um, rather than Googling, meaning... Instead of Googling things, you could just like watch porn. Uh, because on Google, you can get some somewhat gruesome pictures that have been taken mid-surgery. Oh, God. Duly noted. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just keep that in mind. Um, and to educate some more on what I meant by you can't really tell until they come, basically just that. During sex, you would treat it as... Uh, like a cis man's penis only when they orgasm there wouldn't be any liquid come just the other tells like moans and body shakes uh -huh. i have a lot more thoughts on the episode i'd like to share but if it, being on an episode is something that i actually feel up to being able to do i think it's more in and it's been more interesting in that format i've also attached a couple pictures of me um So they've requested that we don't post the pictures, just so yeah. everybody's aware. Mm. Uh, right. So we'll oblige by that. Um, but this is so we know who we're talking to. Okay. And they said, thanks. Then, um, <laughs> I love this. The PS says, sorry for all the typos in this. And my original message, I typed them out on my phone and my autocorrect mangled them a little bit. 
He is adorable. Understood that autocorrect is a is a beast. Uh, and then we got a separate email, which I'm calling the PSS. Hello, I've talked it over with some friends and decided I think it'd be good to come on if the invitation is still open and you're still wanting to chat with the trans bear. Sure. Look at him. So thank you. Yay! <laughs> yeah. So he thank you. Adorable. So first of all, I, I'm trying to get past that. Um, <laughs> trying to get well, past this adorable. they can't. Well, they, no one can see the pictures but us. So I'm like, I don't want to like keep harping on that. Um, so thank you for um, responding again. And yes, I believe for, I'm sure we can agree that the invitation is still open. Yeah. So that's something we could potentially set up in the future. Mm-hmm. Be on hands for that, you know, potential show. <laughs> yeah, we're we're not a closed show. We're an open show. Yeah. We don't have yes. to de- worry about dealing with partners. This is a really bad joke pun about trying to be in an open <laughs> relationship and thing. Anyways. Oh, I was stop. like, where the hell did that come <laughs> <laughs> I was like. There's just a whole bunch I'm of like, confusion coming on. I was like, wait, wait, I get it. Jeff and I are single, but Damon's like got a man so pretty sure that counts anyways (laughs) so yeah so we got a response to our show that we did (laughs) and now we're uh, excited about the fact that we can have uh, someone come (laughs) on and actually talk about things and get us more educated what is going on with you Damon Arrow and his comment in our in the chat you see that? That's growth. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I see that meme all the time, and I love it. Uh, and I am not anyway. familiar with the meme. But anyways, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's yeah. fine here. Hey, um, uh, while we're at it, uh, after all of that, let's get on with this. <laughs> Does anybody else kind of miss the uh, tumble for you theme? Just kind mm-hmm. of like a little bit. A little oh, bit. the theme? Yeah. I mean, I it's Boy George. You could go listen to it anytime you want. Anyways. Moving on. <laughs> uh, so the tweet I found uh, was from V. Rainfold. At V. Rainfold, I should say. That's R-A-I-N-F-O-L-D. Also, there's a link on our website. Mm. Um, uh, speaking of people of color or, you know, non-white people, um, I, I, I found this super sexy, uh, Asian guy. Uh, he had shower thoughts. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? And, you. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, the first reply comment is you, hopefully. <laughs> so, I mean, pe- people all game mm-hmm. ab- about that, so. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. yeah, he's 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 a kitty patiti. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, I have a thing for Asian men. I have a thing for all men, but you know, it's one of those kind of like, ooh, I kind of like their style. It's one of those things because like <gasps> the Asian ooh. traditions don't aren't, aren't necessarily as uh, hairy on the body. Um. Uh, but I still find them utterly attractive. So I really like some of his ink. Are you looking like... at the rest of them? Yeah, I'm scrolling through, and he has this really nice, like, multicolor. Uh... It's kind of it's not a Celtic knot, but it's kind of in that style. Oh. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, I actually saw um, this on a, on a retweet. I am now uh, following him. Because oh. I want more of him. Butt picks and jock straps. Totally approved. Yay. <laughs> it's it's follow uh, friendly. Oh shit. <laughs> this is the wrong, wrong account. Oh look, my butt's on Twitter. That's a cute post. That's the way to phrase it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like so. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a Celtic knot, but it's it looks like it's been done in like Southeast Asian Indian style. Like this is my, totally my white ignorance trying to describe it. So, um, oh, hello. All right. If you ever listen to this podcast, sir, you are great in water. I'm just gonna say that. There's another shower shot later. Oh, no, it's not a shower shot. I did seven minutes workout. Look how wet I am. Well, you look like you just stepped out of the shower. So, Alrighty, then. I'm very in any case, you're just absolutely hot. Right, hold on. I won't worry this. Does it say anything in his bio? Uh, no, it doesn't. Geek gamer, amateur artist who loves food and naps. Here, here. This, this, this sounds exactly like me <laughs> okay yeah here I, you know what you know what would be nice what uh let, let's share the love with with our chat here we are took you long enough yeah i'm a little slow on the roll anyways damon how about you what do you got is muted maybe yeah, I mute it. Sorry, that's my thing. Anyway, um, so I have I have skinny dipping, and it is a it is from um, the Red Jack. Only the E in red is a three at the Red Jack. Um, and he wants to he asked a question. Who wants to get naked and take a dip with him? And he says, swimming at my favorite pool in all of Texas. And you have a little 45-second uh, video of him um, taking off his um, swimsuit. And then you get some gorgeous shots of him, you know, showing off. It's cute face and body and butt. And, yeah. 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 And if I'm not mistaken, Jeff... I believe he is in Austin, Texas. <gasps> He's one of the Austin Bears. Yep. He is. His thing says that that he's here. So there you go. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, again, another person followed. <laughs> I... I like scrolling through people's like profile, like through their uh, wall or whatever. I love how he said working from home. And by working, I meant jerking off and answering emails. TGIF. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gear Gare decided to double dip, but that's okay. It's fine. You will understand in a moment. Okay. Reserve your judgment. Okay. So the first one, uh, sexy man birthday. So the person that I follow, Jake, this is his husband, Luke. He had a birthday. And so he wanted to celebrate. Um, they're a really cute ass couple. And Luke, I've seen at some events. Aww. Um, I have not seen Jake in person, but he's a cutie patootie. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second. So, uh, but they're like a great, like big guy couple that like, I'm like, oh, look at them. And, they are horrible. Yeah, they and are. booty shots. <laughs> <laughs> and booty shots. I know. Like, <laughs> First a nice facial, a little light kiss on the forehead, a, a kissing on the mouth, and then butts. Yeah. I love this picture of the two of them side by side in bed, naked, like, like, you know, belly down butt up um not ass up but you know they're just laying on their on their stomachs and i'm just like wow that's 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 nice <laughs> yes it is so um but the reason why it's double dipping is because uh so jake also posted a separate one at a different time that said finished filming a bit was a lot more fun than i thought it would be um which I'm not going to get into what kind of that is in reference to, but if you get to see the picture, yes, yeah, <laughs> um, hi, yeah, 
Jake's a big boy and he's tatted and he's adorable and uh, likes to cook, mostly bake, um, and is good at it. And so, yeah. Basically, he's the perfect husband. Yeah, he's um, – and he's toying – I say toying – considering – uh, maybe doing an OnlyFans. He's uh, probably, what was it, the month of July? He kind of came onto this thing about, like, you know, the body is beautiful, kind of big boys need to be represented and be seen as sexy kind of thing. So that's why I wanted to um, post this and, and give him some love and be like, you know, more of this online is going to be appreciated. Yes. So... Um, and he even got a solicitation from somebody who was like, would love to film with you. Such a sexy stud. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> it's happened. I finally started to enjoy Twitter more than Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cute. Hi. This is definitely an adult. Okay. So I guess I got to follow you too. <laughs> Is that somebody else or him? Yes, the one who offered to to film with Jake. Uh, he's at Cities Cub. That's C I T I I E S C U B. It is a It is a porn Tumblr, guaranteed. Once you see the profile photo. Yes, I see. <laughs> wait, wait. So you spell that again? C I T I E S, like cities in plural. C U B. Uh, just his profile picture makes me want to follow him. Right, exactly. See, like that's <laughs> considering his that's not... considering his his profile picture is his torso and penis. Yeah, his his bio, and he's twin... in the Twin Cities. Right, Twin <laughs> Cities, gay bear, PS4 comics, movies, and more. Not safe for work. Follow. <laughs> okay, can you take me away from family affairs in October? Oh my uh, god, he's got a beard that's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I'm falling in love. That's lovely. Shall we? Yes, move it on. Okay. Into the links. I got nothing. But. Actually, let me change this. This isn't the links. This is uh, Gary's Netflix picks of the month. <laughs> okay. Um, so I uh, watched a couple of things on Netflix this past month. Most of it um, was continuations of things. As an example, I watched Grace and Frankie season five. Uh, the RuPaul Charles was in a couple of episodes. It was fun. Um, I think Grace and Frankie like is doing this weird dance with reality slash not reality because there's some like kind of over the toppy things that happen in it. And I'm like, really? Okay. Um, is it like, or you mean like it's Modern Family esque or something? That may be a way to describe it. I've never seen Modern Family, so it's a, it's like a, 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 a mockumentary. Uh, yeah, but it, it's, it's not, a fake it's documentary. Not... Right, it's, it's not the documentary shot that style way. shot, but okay. Yeah, no, it's not shot that way. But like, you know, just some of the things that happen in it are a bit fantastical. But like, you know, it's got heart and that kind of stuff, so mm. it's good. Um, I was excited because Netflix has DC's Legends of Tomorrow, and I didn't get to finish watching season four when it airs, so I was able to get caught up on that. Uh, and then, neat. what's that? Oh, I said neat. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, and then uh, just last night, even though I know it's the month of August, it's, it's going to be a month and I don't want everyone to miss out. Uh, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power Season 3 is on Netflix. Woo! Um, Wait, did you I skip over it time last time? night. So, uh, yeah. yeah I, I'm still upset with these length of the, their seasons. Oh, how it, like it's just a couple of episodes? Yeah, it, yeah, I did. I I breeze through it. And I'm like, and, and of course, it ends on a cliffhanger. It's like, wait well, a minute, no, there's more to this. What? Right, right. Well, that's kind of the whole point. But that's exciting because that means there's going to be a season four. 
So, because mm-hmm. uh, seasons one and two were all done at the same time, like they knew when Netflix agreed to do the this new Shira and the Princesses of Power, they were going to do two seasons, and then because it did so well with season one launch, they ought to, they then moved on. But what I hadn't read, but it was, seems obvious, is that they did seasons three and four because of the way season three ended. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, I kind of miss on it the uh, uh, the transformation sequence I have mixed feelings on because if you remember the original one it, mm. it was more of this like glamtastic she holds off her, her sword the crystal glows and then this swirl of light surrounds her and transforms her yeah, I think, that, I think that was a lot. I kind of like that better than the uh, real, like, quick anime style version that they've got. Well, one. like, what surprised me is in this season, this is not meant to be a spoiler, there is at least one transformation, if not maybe twice, that Adora transforms like that. Yeah. Like, they just do away with the whole sequence. Mm-hmm. You know, she she raises the sword, she says, for the honor of Grayskull, and... And boom, she's just she up. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we we got quick change. We could we could do quick change if we need to. Now, and and not to say that they don't pay <laughs> tribute to the original series, because I will t- say this: I'm not. Gonna, I'm trying not to say the specifics, but they do pay tribute to the original series in season three. In fact, the music is there. Mm, cool. Um, so those if, are the if, if you think of the episode that I'm talking about, well, it was last night. I'm let's, also kind of tired. Let's just say this: it, it was kind of part of the Dungeons and Dragons sort esque episode. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, those are the things that I was continuing Dungeons and Dragons, on. so you don't understand the DM screen. But then, anyways, move it on. There you go. So. Uh, those are the things that I continued watching on. And then there were two other things that I, I liked enough that I want people to know about it. If you're interested, if you're a musical theater queen, <clears throat> Damon, and <laughs> you're interested in something that you may not have necessarily known existed. There's a, a documentary called bathtubs over Broadway. Uh, the main focus is one of David Letterman, yes, as in the David Letterman show, one of the main writers of that show, um, discovers, because when he was originally starting with David Letterman, when David Letterman very first started, about these albums of recordings of what's called industrial musical productions. Mm-hmm. And an industrial musical production is where, like, say, the IGA store company would pay broadway performers to come in and put on a musical about their company and sales and so bathtubs over broadway is this really cute documentary about how he fell into this thing that he never knew of and became a collector of all this eccentric musical stuff including film and meeting actually some of the like the producers the composers Hmm. it's really really good and um, yeah, so if you're into musical type stuff and you maybe knew about this or even if you didn't, it, it was it was really good to watch. And uh, I actually watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Because yeah. mm. it's, so it's on Netflix now. Same It's on Netflix now. Well, I really liked it. Like, I heard mm-hmm. a lot of good things about it when it came out, especially from film critics about the, the animation styles that they did. And, like, you know, just the visuals were really good. Um So I watched it. I liked it. It was really interesting. I'm also very intrigued by the end. Uh, If anyone was a comic book reader, they probably understand way better than me about what (laughs) that is introducing. However, I will say one thing that I'm a little disappointed in. As a person who knows nothing about any of this stuff, I'm thinking, going into the film, there's going to be lots of versions of Spider-Man. That is not necessarily the case. So, like, like that they're like in live action film, they're going to have lots of versions of Spider Man or something. No, 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 no. Yeah. That there, that there's going to be like a high Multiple number versus. of versions. Right, right. Like, if there's a multiverse, one would think there would be like you know hundreds or with a yeah. comma thousands. But in the mm-hmm. film, they don't go that far. It's 
I, I understand for content, like how they were trying to do it. I just was like, oh, we only get a couple? Okay. Yeah. So. The, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you, you can only do so much. But um, think of it this way uh, the original, the standard Marvel universe is called 616. I mean, for mm-hmm. reasons other than being the 616th of something. Mm. Um, is why they chose that specific number, but yeah, there's the boatload. Yeah. So, um, I recommend going and seeing it. It was fun, interesting. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. It was very action packed. If you haven't seen it, like it pretty much keeps you moving pretty quickly through. And it was wild to see a universe well, and I haven't really watched most of the films. It was wild to see a universe in which people who are not necessarily superheroes are already well aware of who the villains are. Mm-hmm. I'm so used to, I think, at least the Netflix Marvel version of stuff where the layperson doesn't know who the bad guy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, oh, and it's not on Netflix, but uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. summer season has just ended. Um, with a two part, uh, thing I was watching on a Hulu, um, speaking of all the Marvel stuff and that kind of thing. It's, it was a wild, wacky season. Mm-hmm. I and have, a, I want to watch it. I just haven't had a chance to. And it's going to get weirder. Apparently not. I don't know about weirder. It's taking a whole interesting turn. So yeah. if you're into I've, it, I suggest I've just gotten it. into other things that I totally lost track of agents of shield and, I, Gotham lost me at some point, and Gotham uh, lost me in the very last episode. <clears throat> very. It, it, it lost me like About a long that. time ago. Um, no. it, and uh, Flash, Arrow, and Legends of Tomorrow, which I used to like constantly watch, I just kind of fell off of, and I have no idea where I lost it. So even if I go into Netflix to try to catch up uh, for what seasons they've got on there, I'd probably just have no idea where. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm busy yeah. with other other things. That was like me and Once Upon a Time. Mm-hmm. But it was like one of those shows that I was really religiously watching and then just, just fell off the train. And I see. I don't sometimes really... you might want to binge to catch up. It's just having been in the mood. I've been watching yeah. and listening to a lot of D and D shows lately. Uh, staying caught up with Critical Role, watching the entire thing of uh, Acquisitions Incorporated, uh, trying to uh, start fresh on dice camera action. I'm thinking of little, so getting into high rollers. Basically, a lot of D and D stuff. So that's me. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, I, I, if I'm really into something, I pretty much stay all the way to the end. I stayed all the way to the end for once upon a time. I even took the leap into the last new season story concept that a lot of people got pissed about. Um, yeah, I mean, I just I try I try my best, like if I'm really interested in it. But I don't also watch a lot of TV shows per se. Yeah. So and I don't have television. Well, I mean, I have air digital signal, but like I don't have the cable television stuff so i don't mm-hmm. know what the new shit is that's on like i see people post about things and i'm like oh okay well that's the thing like uh then shows come to an end and i'm like oh i never even saw it mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so. i mean you've got hulu you just upgrade to hulu tv that might work get some more I'm, channels so here's my big debate is i need to figure out what i'm gonna do about two things cbs all access has Star Trek Discovery on it. I only saw the first season, so I want to like be able to get back to go and binge and watch that. But I'm not really in the mood to like pay that much more. Like this is my this is my beef. I, I don't think there's really anything else on CBS I want to watch. So I'm kind of like, <laughs> uh, and now HBO has got some stuff going on. I never cared kitten caboodle about Game of Thrones. Like, yay, that's yeah. great. Lots of people love it. Good for them. Um, but I forget what's coming on there. There's something on there. Oh, I want to watch Chernobyl. And there, I think there's something else that's coming to it that I am interested in. And now Disney's going to later this year release their um, their channel stuff, which is going to have a whole bunch of things on it. So I don't know. Uh, I need to look into what that is all about because I have no idea. All I know it's going through the Apple TV app. 
So, well, and that's just it. like now Apple TV's doing this whole thing too. So I don't know. We'll Let's figure it out. I think it's probably kind <laughs> of along the line of like the Amazon channel thing that you can get. But hey, I have YouTube TV, so I can I can work with that. That's that's how I watched all the last season of Doctor Who. Unfortunately, it still hasn't come back yet. Still waiting on that. I want more Jodie Whittaker. I was wearing my Jodie Whittaker shirt that my brother got me uh, for for work. Uh, speaking of shirts, that's also the end of the show. <gasps> Anyways, uh, there's plenty of ways to contact us. Pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Shoot us a voicemail like Q did um, by leaving us a message at 361 C. We'll talk that's 361-265-8255. You can also like send us an audio file from your voice memo app if you don't want to actually call us. But, you know, call. Convenient. Uh, you can find us on various social media outlets on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, right here on YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our Entourage chat, which... Um, uh, what was the quote that Chris had the other day going through the shared media section of our, um, our, our chat is like a replacement for, for Twitter or no Tumblr. Wow. I just realized this link here is better than my old Tumblr feed. I need like the uh, shared media. So just to tease you on that. Uh, and you can get there by going to tinyurl.com slash telegram dash C-O-L. Uh, you can subscribe to our Google Calendar and find out when we're doing these sh- live shows at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash C-O-L. Uh, you can find merch in our merch store, such as this Proud Out Loud shirt that I'm wearing, or like Dear- Gary's wearing, the um, uh, Consent is My Foreplay shirt. He's got the Bear Edition. Ta-da! Uh, and uh, new shirt coming soon very soon as soon as I figure out uh, the description for it um, at zazzle.com slash comes out loud you can also become a patron uh, we appreciate all of our patrons who just got paid at the beginning of the month here so we thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you a billion times uh, at patreon.com slash comes out loud you can subscribe to us on iTunes, uh, Google Play Podcasts, and you can find us on Spotify as well. You can find me anywhere in the internet. So it's Box Tech, Box Cuppy, Box Cub, Box something or other. I am Theater Cup 79 on most Beverly websites, etc., and Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. I could pretty much be found anywhere online as Gabriel73. And with that. Say good morning, everybody. Good morning. Have a good one, y'all. <laughs> a little lady at the end. Uh, yeah. Huh? Uh, our, we were just dropping some frames near the end there, but that's a quick one. Oh, okay. And how many frames to really drop as long as the audio goes through? It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine here. How are you? Mm-hmm. I'm good. Somebody. Okay, I'll be right back. I like how we kind of went on a complete tangent about like binge watching shows and stuff like that well and there was a bunch of chat all about spider-man and spider-verse stuff so yeah yeah there's a shit ton of spider-man 
There was an entire series called Into uh, the Spider Verse, um, the comics. So th- I think that's what he was re- referencing. Hmm? Sorry, I. <sighs> So uh, I know someone who's starting up a business, Mm -hmm. uh, part of a large team of people, and they um, have been doing this for just a little bit, and they reposted something, uh, some print copy thing, and I was really frustrated because the first time that they started this thing, it was Mm -hmm. not well designed and I was like all twitchy because I was like people can't read eight point font so please don't do that shit um, <laughs> <laughs> so what? consequently uh, I'm telling Jeff I'm like distracted by something but uh, so the I don't I have a to catch Damon up I have a friend who like is part of a large group of people that are starting up a business and um, when they started up there was some print stuff that they had and like I saw it and I was annoyed because there's a lot of small font on it and I was like Please don't use eight point font. Um, <laughs> I didn't say that to them, but you know, I kind of made a comment about how, like, you know, it could be a little bit better design. So then they just reposted on Facebook that they um, uh, turned around and you know redid their thing, and then they posted on Facebook, and I was like, <sighs> it almost looks the same fucking way it did last time. Like they didn't really make any improvements with it, so I reached out to the person that is, you know, a previous coworker slash uh, sort of acquaintance friend, who's part of this team that's making this business happen. And I said, "For the love of everything, please redo this. And when you do it, consider like font size and design, and like you know, so people can actually read the damn thing." Um, I was so f- ticked off about this i spent three and a half hours late friday night on my computer just doing it for them Mm -mm. as an example saved it sent it off and was like (laughs) here's an example of what i'm talking about (laughs) wow i was just like owen i was just like what the heck owen joined the 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 the, uh, uh yes Telegram. The, uh, telegram. Yay! I thought Owen was already in the Telegram. Well, maybe not. just said he joined by the, the, the link. Maybe not. I could be wrong. Maybe I enticed him with uh, uh, the. Oh. Oh, that's that's a. That's Ryan. No, oh, that's Owen. <gasps> and his so... Steven Universe thing. Anyways. That's nice. <laughs> Did you just blow off Steven Universe? No. You're like, I'm just... Steven Universe. And like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I think that's it for the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stop sharing.